Hey there, thanks for joining me today. This is Laura Lynn with KeepInkingUp.com. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! in San Antonio, Texas. And today I wanted to share how I made this cute little gift bag to hold a gift card. Um, normally I send gift cards in a pocket in a greeting card, but I thought sometimes there's an occasion where you might want to decorate it a little bit more and give it more like a gift. So I came up with this little um, design of a, a little box uh, for the size for a gift card. This used the um, products from the Magnolia Lane suite of products. I used the uh, Magnolia Memories um, dies for this, as well as uh, some of the stamp, uh, stamp from the stamp set from the Good Morning Magnolia stamp set. This is a double uh, case stamp set. I've combined them into one case to save on some storage. Um, here are the dies that come with or come in the bundle with the stamp set. If you choose to do that, you do save 10% with bundles. Um, in this example, I used this particular die, and in today's card, we're gonna use some of these other dies. So let me go ahead and put that aside. <clears throat> I will still be using some of the designer series paper from that suite of products. Um, I just think this paper is gorgeous, really pretty. So you can make this bag out of cardstock, uh, but, or any other designer series paper that you may have. I just really like the look of this paper. You're gonna need a piece of paper that is nine and a half inches by six inches. If your paper has a direction to it, you wanna make sure that the pattern is going up and down uh, perpendicular to the six inch side. So you're gonna put your uh, piece of paper in your Simply Score scoring board with the nine and a half inches at the top, and we're gonna score it at one inches, one inches, one inch, four and a half inches, five and a half inches and nine inches. Then you're going to rotate it to the right so your, the, your pattern is going this way now and you're gonna score it again at one inch. Then you're gonna flip your paper completely over and score again at five inches. Now don't worry about the dimensions. I will put them in the description of this video below. Once you have all your score lines, we're gonna go ahead and burnish them with a bone folder. Some people like to finger uh, fold them and that is fine if that uh, is what the look that you're going for, but I like to have nice crisp creases on all of my boxes and bags. So I'm gonna use my bone folder to burnish all of my score lines. So I'll just go through all of them and do that. I'll just take a minute to get them all. We have quite a few here. One more, the top. I don't know if you noticed, but the top has a little decorative flap, which I really like. I'll bring in the sample again. You can see the, the two sides of the paper. I just think that adds a really nice touch. So now that we've uh, burnished on all the score lines, I want to go ahead and adhere this flap down using some tear and tape. You could use liquid glue if you prefer. I'm a, a fan of the tear and tape. Oops, looks like I'm coming to the end of my roll. Ah. That's not gonna stick, is it? Okay. All right, well, good thing I have another roll right here. So we can use that to finish adhering this down. I tell you, I go through this stuff, I love it. It's so quick and easy and it holds really, really well. And you can tear it, which is always helpful. I'm gonna press really well into that so it, it is really sticking to the paper. Then I'll remove the release papers from my two pieces now and then I can fold that down and press really well to get that really stuck down. Then I'd like, to, I'd like to go and back in and burnish on those particular folds because now you've got the double layer of paper. Okay, now that I have all that done, we know that this is the top of our bag, so that makes this the bottom, so it helps us to know which areas to cut. One side you have one inch, and the other side you have a half of an inch. We're gonna cut this little rectangle out here. So I'm gonna cut up here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and miter into this section right there. Remove that part, and I'll miter the top as well. Then I'm gonna go and cut up on all of the little score lines up to the first horizontal score line. So I'll just snip those. One more. Right there. Is out of the way, and now we can add more tear and tape to our flap here. Like 
that. I'll rub that in really well. Remove the paper backing. And then I can close up my bag. Now I do want to be kind of careful and make sure that I get this lined up really well. It should just fold right on there. Okay, so that's the back of our bag. So since this is the back, I'm going to fold in the sides and the back, and I'll put a, another piece of tear and tape on the front flap. Rub that in. Tear the backing off and pull that up. And there we have our sweet little gift bag for the gift card holder. This is a, the size of a gift card. You can see that it fits in really nicely like that. Okay, so let's um, talk about decorating it. Um, I mentioned earlier that we're gonna use a couple of the dies from the coordinating die set. We're gonna use all of these dies. I have them already pre-cut to save a little bit of time. So these are the pieces that we're gonna use. I have two large leaves and a small leaf. I have one of each of the sizes of the stamen, and then I have two each of the petal pieces. So I have two of the large petals, I've got two of the small ones and two of the medium ones. I'm gonna use my bone folder again to break down the fibers of these pieces so that I can manipulate them really well and make them look like a really pretty flower when I put them together. So I'm just gently pulling on the on the bone folder. With these smaller ones, you want to make sure you don't pull too hard to rip off the petals. Ask me how I know that. And these last ones. These are the ones you have to be a little bit more careful with. Because they come to a smaller point at the center. For these, I'm also going to just use my fingers and bend the petals in a little bit in the middle just to, to cut them a little differently. Okay, then I'm also gonna use my bone folder to break down the fibers of the stamen. And I'll kind of cut that a little bit with my fingers. So do the same with this one. This one even tighter. Okay, let's start putting this flower together. I'm going to start with the stamen. I'm going to use some liquid glue, just a teeny little dot on there. Put that into the center of the other stamen. I have my big clumsy fingers here. Let's see if we can get that centered in there. I'll just kind of cup it a little bit. Okay, then we'll glue these other pieces together. And just to offset the petals. Put those two together, give them a second to dry. I'll do the same to this set. Set them, hold them down for just a second to let them dry, and then finally this one. Again, I'm going to cup up this one, these petals a little bit more because they're going to be in the center of the flower. You just use your hand to manipulate the paper a little bit. We, we softened the fibers with the bone folder so that you can manipulate them a little easier. Now we can attach these layers together. So I'll put a little bit on there, kind of offset the petals from that one. Hold it down for a second, have it stick to your finger. I'll add a little bit to this one, put that in the center as well. The liquid glue helps you, you can kind of move it around a little bit. And then we'll add our stamen in there also. In the center of the flower. Okay, and then 
we can flush up the stamen a little bit. And the petals. Isn't that pretty? Now we can add our leaves on. I'm going to add those with some glue dots. So I'll just open up here and I'll stick the leaves into the glue dot. I'll add one here. And we'll put another one, oh, maybe not directly across from it. Oh, it didn't work. Let's do another one. I don't want it directly across from it. We'll put it kind of up like this. I think that would look nicer. And then we'll put the other one here with that one. Isn't that cute? Super cute. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this flower now to our bag using a couple of dimensionals. Stick your hand in there to press it on there nicely. This flower took up a lot of space on the bag, so I don't think that I'm going to add a sediment, sentiment, but it, you could if you wanted to add a little happy birthday or um, for you or whatever if you wanted to. It is, I think that flower looks really nice on there though. And then we're going to, excuse me, we're going to use a crocodile and punch a hole in the top, in the center. And then I'm going to take some of our polka dot tool ribbon. I need to put this on a little bit of an angle. It's easier to thread through holes if we have a little bit of an angle on there. So I'm going to thread it through both sides, or both holes. Pull some out here. Then I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to bring this ribbon up over the back and go through the hole again in the front. Okay, does that make sense? I, I pulled it, I pulled both of them, I pulled the, the ribbon through both holes, came up over the back, and then back through the front. Okay, and now I can tie a bow with this beautiful polka dot ribbon. And then I can trim off ribbon from the roll there. Isn't that pretty? So super cute. So anyway, isn't that a cute little package for a, for a gift card? I think that would be great for um, you know, a bridal shower, um, a wedding, uh, a birthday. There's all kinds of uses that you could use with this beautiful Magnolia themed products, but you're not limited to that. You can use any um, designer series paper or card stuck that you have. Here's a couple of other examples that I made. Here's a nice one using some retired Christmas de designer series paper. This stamp set is new coming in our um, holiday catalog as well as this set of dies here that did the pine cone. But the paper and the ribbon are retired. And then I did this one as well with the birthday theme. This uh, really pretty birthday paper uh, is retired as well with the balloon punch. That is still available um, as well as the uh, um, Baker's Twine is still available, and the punch and the birthdays are the best days. The birthdays are the best days sentiment is from the Beautiful Friendship stamp set, but that's just another uh, example of how you can use this design. This would be a, a lovely birthday gift card holder. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful on how to make a really pretty packaging for a gift card, and I hope you give it a try uh, for your next time that you give a gift card to somebody. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.